Welcome to the Brass and Woodwind Shop. Usually when I do a video, I know what the repair is going to be, but on this one, I do not know what the problem is. I know that the valve is stuck, but I do not know why it's stuck. I do not know what's wrong with this valve, so I'm going to do this repair on video, and we're going to get this figured out. Before I even get started, I'm going to get all the evidence I can on this trumpet. It's always good to know what brand you're working with. This is a Doc Severinsen 1000B model, and it's made by Khan. All that I know about this valve right now is that the customer brought it in for a stuck valve, and it is really stuck. It's not moving at all. Also, I want to know about the other valves. The other valves work, so I know that the problem has to do just with this one valve. Another thing I notice is this dent right here. And a dent like that means that probably the instrument was sitting down, and then there was some pressure on it this way. And if the pressure pushed on the second valve slide, that would make the second valve stick. In this case, it is the first valve. So one of the possible problems is maybe the bell stem on the trumpet got pushed in and it's pushing into the valve. That is one possible problem. I do not think that's the issue on this one, but it is possible. The reason why I do not think that is the problem though is because the valve is really stuck and if it were that, it probably would at least go up and down a little bit. Another thing that's easy to check is dents in the casing. Look on the casing for small dents. Look all the way around. Okay, I do not see any dents in the casing. So that is not the problem. Also, usually if there's a dent in the casing, the valve still will go up and down a little bit, but it will just not go up and down well. The next thing I'm going to do is look inside the casing as good as I can without taking the valve out. I'm going to do that by taking off the valve caps and the first slide. And I'm also going to take off the bottom valve cap. And then I'm going to look in all the places where I can see in there and see if there's any problem. I can't see anything right there. It looks fine. I'm also going to feel in there. Okay, I don't feel anything. I'm checking for maybe some oil that should not be in there. Sometimes people put the wrong oil in there and that can cause a problem but I don't think that is the case on this one. Then I'm going to look inside of the slide tubes and see if I can see anything. I'm going to hold the trumpet up to the light and look inside. And again, I don't see anything that would cause this problem. I'm also going to pull out the other valves and see if I can find any evidence. I don't know why there would be any evidence on there, but I'm just going to check anyway. And also, I am going to get these valves out of the way so that I can work on this one easier. There is something I do notice on the other two casings, though. If I turn this around, look inside of the casings towards the top. There is a spot there where the metal is worn down, and also on the other one, too. And also the top of the casing is pushed down a little bit. It's not level. So it almost makes me wonder if the customer did something to the valve to make this problem. One last thing I want to do before I pull the valve out is look inside of the casing from the top. To do that I need to pull out the valve stem. The valve stem is stuck though, so I'm going to use this tool pull that out. I'm being very careful. I got that loosened up so now I can pull it out by hand. I'm going to pull out the spring. I'm also checking out the valve guide. Sometimes a valve guide problem can cause things to get wedged in there too, but I don't think that is the case on this one. I'm going to go in there with the spring hook and see, okay, that, yeah, the valve guide is loose, so that is not the problem on this one. Now I need to pull the piston out. When a valve is that stuck, sometimes it can cause problems or you can do damage when you try to pull it out. But the valve does need to come out to do any work to it, so it's a risk that you need to take. But I'm going to be very careful when I pull it out to do the least amount of damage or preferably no damage at all when I pull that out. I have a wooden dowel that I'm going to use that fits into the casing and I'm going to tap it out with that. But I need to be careful because if the dowel goes inside of that little circle right there, it can push that part in and it can do serious damage to the valve and also to the ports that go through the valve. But this dowel, it rests on the edge of the valve, so it should be fine. It, sh it should at least not damage the bottom of the piston when I pull it out. I don't know what's going to happen to the rest of it though. 
But like I say, I'm going to be very careful when I pull that out. I'm going to tap on the dowel with a rawhide mallet. I'm going to tap lightly at first. Okay, it is moving. Okay, there it goes. Okay, it was not that stuck, which is good. Now I'm going to inspect the valve. You can see that there is some graining that goes around the valve like that. Usually the graining on a valve goes up and down. I think someone used some sandpaper on this valve. Probably what happened is it got a little bit stuck and then somebody used some sandpaper on this to try to free it up and that did not solve the problem. I'm also going to check out the inside of the casing. I'm going to hold it up to the light to see what I can see. And I'm doing it first just like it came out. And then what I'm going to do is clean it out to see if there's anything on there. Okay, it's not too dirty. But I'm going to look and see if I can see anything else this time. Okay, it looks like there is a... It looks like there is a spot where the metal is worn down. About right in between those two ports right there. I'm going to hold this up to the light so you can see what I am talking about. I need to get it into position. Okay, about right there you can see that there's a spot where the metal is a little shinier. That's because the piston rubbed against the inside of the casing there and that is where the problem is. Now I'm going to take the first valve and try it in the other casings Okay, that seems to work fine, like that. Okay, let's try the other one. And that seems to work fine too. So the problem is probably not the valve. Now I'm going to try the second valve in the first casing, and I'm guessing that it will probably get stuck. I'm going to be careful. Yes, it is stuck. And right about where I noticed the problem in there, so I'm going to be careful and I'm not going to try to do any damage to the second valve. So it does appear that the problem is in the casing and right about there. That would make me think that the problem probably is that the bell stem got pushed in. I'm going to try the valve casing mandrels in there. I think it's either a 664 or 665. The number on the valve casing mandrel is how many thousandths of an inch diameter it is. Okay, the 665 fits in there. So now I'm going to try it on the first valve. And it gets stuck there. So I'm going to pull that out. Put in the 664. Okay, the 664 also gets stuck there. I also have a 661 mandrel. Okay, that one goes in there. So I know that this is pushed in probably just a couple thousandths of an inch. Not very much, but it's enough to make a valve get stuck. I want to confirm that the problem is the bell stem being pushed in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 664 mandrel, which is the smaller of the ones that do not go in there. I'm going to put that in there. And then I'm going to bend this back and see if it goes down, but it does not, so... I'm still going to guess that the bell stem is the problem. It's probably just pushed in too much to straighten it out by pushing on it like that. So, hmm. Next thing to do is to take the wooden assembly mandrel, put it in the vise, and put the trumpet on there. I'm going to try to straighten out the bell stem. I'm going to put this in there again. And I'm going to pull on that. I'm pulling pretty hard, but I'm using a controlled bend. If I did just bend back on this and I did not control it, this whole bell bow would just bend back and it would make a big mess out of the trumpet. So what I am doing is I'm using a controlled bend. With my left arm, I'm holding onto this part of the trumpet. And the reason why is so that this part of the trumpet does not bend this way when the other part bends the other way. So I'm holding onto this, and then with my hand, I'm holding on to this portion because the bend needs to rotate around here. So I'm holding this so that when it bends, it bends right here where it's supposed to bend. Now I'm going to start to bend it again. And I'm going to keep an eye on the mandrel to see when that goes down. Okay, so I'm, I'm pulling pretty hard on this. The mandrel still is not moving. Let's see what we have here. Okay, the mandrel is going in pretty hard, 
it goes up to that point and stops and then I can get it through but I need to push pretty hard to do that so I'm going to keep doing that okay let's see if it's any better okay the mandrel is going through a little bit easier now but still it is way too hard so I'm just going to keep bending this until the mandrel goes through and then when it does go through remember this is the smaller mandrel so when it goes through I'm going to have to replace it with the larger mandrel and then make that work so I'm just going to keep doing this Okay, and I can see that the dent on there is getting a little bit smaller, too. I'm wondering, too, if maybe I'm pushing the wrong direction. If this got pushed in this way and the other part got pushed back that way. Hmm, that is a possibility. Maybe I'm pulling the wrong direction. Maybe I need to push it. What I'm going to do is put that in there very lightly and let it stop right there. And then I'm going to push that way and see if it goes down at all. I didn't see it move at all. I'm going the other way to see if it moves at all. No, it really didn't. Hmm. I'm going to put this through the bottom. And I'm going to put it in just enough so that it's held in. So when it falls out, I should be able to tell which direction the bell stem needs to go. So I'm going to pull on it first. Okay. So Okay, it fell out, but I'm not sure if it was from pushing or pulling. So I'm going to try that again. Okay, I'm going to push. Okay, it did not come out. Now I'm going to pull. This does not seem to want to come out with pushing or pulling, which almost makes me think this may have been pushed in and then the customer may have pulled it back and it may have created the problem in both directions possibly. Maybe it's more shaped like an oval than a circle with a pushed in side. If that's the case, probably what I'm going to want to do is push the mandrel in there and then tap on it until it starts working better. Now I'm going to tap on the mandrel with the rawhide mallet. What that's going to do is it's going to cause some vibrations in the mandrel and that's going to start pushing out whatever is pushing in to the mandrel. Now I'm going to see if that works any better. Okay, yeah, it does slide in and out easier. It's still not good. But it did help a little. So I'm going to tap on it some more. Okay, that goes in a lot easier now. So it's headed in the right direction at least. Now I'm going to put it in from the bottom and do the same thing. Something really bad just happened to this trumpet, but it is not where I thought it was going to. I thought what might happen is I might bend the bow back too far, but that is not what happened. Here's what happened. When I was tapping on the mandrels, this brace came loose. Some braces are soft soldered on like this one and they break often and you just solder them back together. These braces right here, the ones in between the valves are different. They are hard soldered on there and the solder is supposed to stay soldered forever. But this one did come loose and it did not just break off of the casing, it broke off inside of the casing. So there is a gap right there. I don't know how well you can see it, but there is a gap right there. 
not only did that brace break, but also this brace right there, since this one broke, it pushed into this casing, and now this casing is severely damaged too. I don't know if you can see this in the video, but these two casings are not parallel anymore. They got pushed in. I'm going to hold this up to the light again so that you can see it. That one hole there, that's a port, and that's supposed to be there, but that other little hole, that is not supposed to be in the casing, and that is a big problem. After 27 years of repairing instruments, I've never seen a brace break like that before. And you may think I was tapping on that a little too hard, and I was pushing it to the limit. But I have tapped that hard on mandrel several times before, and nothing like this has ever happened. I cannot easily fix this problem. It would take a lot of work to fix this. It would be a lot easier just to give him a new trumpet. I am back. It's the next day. Sometimes when things like that happen, it's good to wait a little while and then come back and figure out the situation. I'm going to show you what I think happened to the trumpet. Here's what I think happened. These braces that hold the valves together are silver soldered on and they're not meant to come apart. Some companies, they solder those braces right onto the surface of the casings and other companies drill holes through the casings put the braces all the way through the casings and then solder it together. And then when they're done, they ream out the excess metal inside of there. And that's what they did on this trumpet. The brace goes all the way through the casings. And when they put solder on it, the solder is supposed to go all the way around. And if you look carefully, you can see right there, you can tell that the solder goes all the way around on all of these. And usually it does. But if you look at this one, there's not a lot of solder. The solder does not go all the way around. There's just a little bit of solder holding that together. So I think what happened is when it came from the factory, this was not soldered together all the way. It was soldered enough to hold it together, but then it took the hit right here, or probably it was sitting down, and then some, maybe someone sat on it or something, but this got bent one way or the other and it pushed this. That probably loosened up this joint a little bit at least, and then it also pushed in the metal over here, and that was what the problem was originally. I think a combination of those two things loosened it up. Then when I went in there with the mandrel and loosened it up, I think that broke it finally. And then after it broke this, it pivoted in and pushed this brace here into the second casing. So what happened is a combination of the factory defect, or at least a partial factory defect, and then the instrument getting damaged, and then me trying to fix the instrument. All of those three things worked together in such a way that caused this problem. So what I'm going to do to fix this is I have another trumpet that's the same model and it's in pretty bad shape. And so what I'm going to do is take off the valve cluster. The valve cluster is actually in good shape. So I'm going to take that off, clean it up. It's a little bit dirty. I'm going to put this valve cluster onto this trumpet and then this trumpet will be in good shape. I know you're wondering how much I'm going to charge the customer for this repair. I cannot charge for replacing the valve block. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to charge how much it should have cost to fix the problem in the first place, which would be about one hour worth of work. However, this will probably take me about three to four hours. So I'm going to lose a little money on this one, but that happens in band instrument repair sometimes. And that's okay, because usually I make money. Every now and then I'll lose money on a project. Now I have a lot of unsoldering to do. I'm going to pull off this valve cluster and that's going to take a little while because there are a lot of solder joints holding this together. Now I'm going to take off all these tubes. I'm going to try to get them off all together. I'll see if they come off that way or not. So you have to heat all three up to temperature at the same time. Okay, here they come. At least two of them. The reason I'm taking the tubes off is because the ones on the trumpet already are in better condition with more lacquer on them. So I'm going to take those off. I think these ones are good though. I probably will leave the first valve ones on. There it comes. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this trumpet. I think all band instrument technicians have a story like this where they destroy someone's instrument and then they have to 
let the people know that their instrument got destroyed. Then you have to figure out what to do, and anyway, it's kind of embarrassing for everybody. You try to avoid things like this, but it happens, and well, you you do as good as you can, but no matter how good you try, but no matter how hard you try, things still happen every now and then. I did get that off together, so that's good. That just goes to show how important it is to gather all the evidence you can on an instrument when you're working on it. This time I did fail on gathering all the evidence together and it did cause a problem, but it does show you how important it is to get the evidence together and you always try not to miss any evidence and usually nothing happens but occasionally something does happen. There's the trumpet in a lot of little pieces. I'm going to solder it back together and when I'm done I will get back to you. The trumpet is soldered back together and it is finished. I did learn a lot during this repair. Even though I've been repairing for 27 years, I still learn new things as I repair instruments. On this repair, I learned to check a little bit more carefully for factory defects. I hope this video is helpful. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.